All right. I have not watched this video. Now, I know that there's a stupid statement said on Twitter about this video, uh, and I would like to respond to that and then the video itself. Uh, but before we get into the video, which is by PragerU, let's go ahead and get into the fan art section so that we can have our dose of dopamine before the periodic torture that punctuates every episode that we end up going into. So the first bit of fan art that I want to show you is from Swampling Leveler. Or at least I, I believe that's what the LVR is for. Or or Lover. Could be that as well. Uh, but they said they are a long-time watcher of the YouTube channel and finally worked up the chops to make some fan art. Uh, they hope I like it. And they've only just recently developed their own art style and they are practicing to actually be good at it. Art isn't their first skill set. And they're a marine biologist by trade. Well, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think it looks great. I actually really like chibi art styles, so this is right up my alley. It's also very cute, just in general. And next, for all of you weird degenerates out there, we have one from Kith, or KTH. Uh, in our previous episode, we showed the work in progress of this, uh, but this is Bouncing Happy Maid service. Bouncing very maid seriously, I guess. I really don't know how to say that without it being somewhat suggestive, but it's it it breasts. It's breasts. With that said, this is the uh, finish of a work in progress we, progress we did see before, and they did say that it's because they're a fucking degenerate that they are going to ruin the cuteness with boin boin. You didn't ruin the cuteness. I'll just say that right now. With that said, thank you very much for submitting your fan art to the channel. If you want your fan art to be shown on any of the videos, the best way to do so is by dropping it into the Discord. Next, a couple of announcements. One, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Hit the bell notification icon, all that other fun stuff, and follow over on Twitch if you haven't done so already. All that stuff is, like, super, super helpful. And lastly, we do have a merch store open now. So if you are the type of person to pick up merch of your favorite YouTubers, and if I happen to be your favorite YouTuber, then um, I'm sorry, but also thank you so much. We have the OWO Wars that have been happening over on the Twitch channel for the last few months, immortalized as merch from Yara Koro. So if you happen to choose the incorrect side uh, of the war, the side that Raz supports, I mean, at least that side has brownies, uh, you can get that on a mouse pad. You can get Yara Koro's wonderful artwork on a baseball cap, stickers, you could get it as an iPad skin. Anything that you could want the artwork on, you could probably get it on. If you want to get any fan art, not fan art, but any of that, then the best way to do so is checking in the description where a link to my Redbubble shop will be open there. And then you'll be able to do that. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the Prager U. Crap. Uh, the video itself, they posted on to their Twitter, as they are apt to do. Disturbing trend. 2% of United States high school students identify as transgender. Uh, most of them teen girls. It says why girls become boys. Now, I'm sure that the uh, scientific reasons, like the fact that uh, gender is a social construct, and uh, people sometimes find that they either experience dysphoria or... Upon performing as a separate gender, they experience gender euphoria. I imagine that either of these self-discovery paths are not going to be talked about by PragerU, and I will be very, very perplexed if they do. Uh, that said, I'm just going to say this right now. I would not be surprised if more and more people come out as trans in the future, just like how the amount of people who publicly, and that's the keyword here, publicly identified as gay increased when we legalized gay marriage and as the social zeitgeist shifted for people who were homosexual. We, with our ever-changing zeitgeist, should expect more people to come out as trans because there are people right now who are 40 and 50 years old coming out as trans because they've never been able to before. They've never felt like it was acceptable in society for them to say that they could. 
these are the statistics that we expect in a world with changing social norms. But, you know, changing social norms is against Prager Hughes' religion. Let's go ahead and play the video. If you know any middle or high school girls today, or if you are one yourself, it would not be surprising if you know someone who identifies as transgender. Okay. The latest statistics indicate that 2% of American high school students now identify as transgender. Yep, like I said, that's what you would expect with changing social norms. And the overwhelming majority of them are teenage girls. Between okay. 2016 and 2017 alone, the number of females seeking gender surgery in America quadrupled. But if you graduated high school over a decade ago, it was unlikely that you knew anyone who was transgender because, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the condition underlying it afflicted roughly 1 in 10,000 people. Wait, 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 hold on. First of all, Kenna Valentine, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an oh, well. Oh, well, secondly, hold on a second. The condition underlying it, are you talking about gender dysphoria? Are you talking about dysphoria? Because not all trans people are dysphoric, mind you. Also, yeah, what version, which version of the DSM are you using? It doesn't likely matter for this, but I'm just... How many people experience gender dysphoria? Pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, 0 0.005 to 0.014% of the population... Uh, that are biological males, and uh, 0 0.002 to 0 0.003 of uh, biological females, uh, so AMAB and AFAB respectively, experience gender dysphoria, and that is from the Covery Village mental health section. Okay, so, yeah, no, that lines up with the numbers PragerU is giving us, but here's the thing, gender dysphoria is not a predisposition to being trans, one can be cis and experience gender dysphoria. One can be trans and not experience gender dysphoria. You can be trans because you were some you you were apathetic in your assigned gender, the gender that you have been performing as your entire life, but experienced euphoria when you engaged in activities that were of a different gender when you were doing things that were outside of what was considered the social norm for, for you and yourself. When you do those things, you experienced euphoria and then decided that, oh, wait, no, I want to do the thing that feels better for me. I want to continue doing the thing that feels better for me to do. Did you think Jake covered this? Uh, Abby Schreer isn't a doctor or a therapist. She wrote a book based on this speculation of hers without any hard evidence. That's so fucking funny. Not to mention, if you're... Fox of Fate points out, if you're NB or gender fluid, technically you are trans. You're not cis. And you, you can be either of those things without experiencing gender dysphoria. Not to mention, the DSM changes over time. We've had multiple iterations of it for a reason, but let's continue the video. Let's continue. Or 0.01% of the population. Almost none of these cases were teenage girls. In fact... Oh, what does almost none mean? What, what is almost none? Because I pulled up the statistic, and what you're saying is almost none is, I mean, technically, yes, it is technically almost none, but it is still almost none, but statistically significant. In fact, it happens more often in uh, AFAB people than AMAB people, according to this right here. No, 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 wait, no, it happens... Wait, hold on. 0 0.005, 0 0.002. No, 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 it happens more often in AMAB people than a fab people according to this that's what it is okay so yeah five and 14 are better bigger than two and three i'm bad at math but point is point is that is still significant that is still an amount of the population that 
you would have to interact with at some point in your life. And those numbers existed there. Saying almost none is different than saying, oh yeah, no, there's this particular uh, statistic that shows what almost none looks like. Before 2012, there was no scientific or medical literature discussing adolescent girls who wanted to transition to the opposite sex. That sounds like a lie. Let's see here. Uh, literature. Girls. So I'm not going to spend the entire time researching for this particular point. If any of you can find literature earlier than this, then it will prove the point that I think, I have a hunch, this is a lie. Uh, if you don't, and if it turns out that this is not a lie, that's still okay, because here's the thing, when it comes to anything, anything scientific, and Martin, if you want, if you want to look that up this one time, go right ahead. And if you want to bring it in before this particular topic is over, I hand that off to you if that is what you want to do. Um, but let's let's go ahead and talk about something else. When we are talking about science, we are not talking about a body of evidence that never changes. We are talking about a body of evidence that is constantly shifting and constantly changing as we get more and more information in and part of getting that information in is having case studies having surveys having an amount of people required to engage in social experiments experiments of really any kind with a large enough focus group that we can actually figure out what's going on and proper controls and all that other fun stuff that makes science a tick with a much smaller group, it's harder to actually have more literature on this. So I'm just going to say this right now. If we have a current understanding of something scientifically, the lack of the information required to come to that conclusion 10 or 8 years ago doesn't matter. We had enough information to come to that now. But there is this preconception that PragerU is trying to push for, as they always do. The idea that well, it wasn't a thing back in my day. And if you have been listening to this video, the amount of that wasn't a thing back in my day is massive. Think about the callbacks. Back in 2012, this wasn't a thing. If you graduated 10 years ago, you probably don't know anyone who's trans. Now, me with a very high proportion of trans people in my audience, I uh, am just going to scream and yell, I know a lot of people who are trans. Maybe because of my position on YouTube, a disproportionate amount of people who are or identify as trans of some variety or flavor. Now, what's funny is Memory Martin was able to look this up. Pre-2012, a content analysis of all literature on trans people and issues from 2002 to 2012, so a decade before what is being said by Prager U. A total of 960 trans-focused publications were encoded. Now, of that 960, I would bet that at least one piece had to deal with adolescence. At least one. In fact, we know for a fact that James Money existed years ago, and he was trying to push things about the societal construction of gender, despite the various ways in which he absolutely fucking failed. We know that literature about this existed prior to. But, you know, go ahead, Prager. You, you, you keep on popping off. You keep on popping off. That doesn't mean that we didn't know about transgender individuals. Gender dysphoria, the severe discomfort in one's biological sex, has been studied for nearly 100 years. Yep, and gender dysphoria is not the only component of being trans, nor is it a necessity. It almost always involved boys who began feeling it between the ages of two and four. Okay, so here's the thing. Yes, according to 
these statistics that we pulled up earlier, it was in fact more prevalent in males. Yes, it did in fact happen more often in AMAB people. But the data does not suggest that it did not also happen in a significant amount to AFAB people. But, you know, continue on, Prager. See, this is the thing about Prager's loaded language. The, you didn't hear about this 10 years ago. You didn't know anybody like this 10 years ago. But I bet your kids do now. The constant talking about, well, this almost never, almost never, almost never, almost never doesn't mean shit. Statistics are hard numbers with a very small amount of variance. Almost never is a statement with a shit ton of variance. Almost never, to me, in a card game, can mean that this happens 1 in 20 times. 5% of the time is almost never to me. To you, almost never can mean 1 in 20 times. 1 in 10 times. Um, if you happen to be a frat boy who desperately needs to convince yourself that you are wonderful with the ladies, um, your EDs almost never uh, is likely 50% of the time. Almost never means nothing as a statement meant to convince you of anything because it has no measurable value. Now, measurable value can be found, again, in statistics, when we have hard numbers. These are things that we can look at and go, yeah, these numbers are not terribly far off from one another. 0 0.005 and 0 0.003 are not numbers that are so far off from another to be insignificant to each other. But the way that Prager words it, you would think that these things are in nightmarishly different categories. But that's the game that Prager U plays. And were strong and persistent in their assertions to everyone around them that they were really girls. When a phenomenon that affects one half of a population, boys, suddenly begins affecting the other half. It didn't suddenly begin affecting the other half. We have the data su to suggest that it's been affecting the other half for a very long fucking time. Liar. Girls. And when its age of onset shifts from preschool to adolescence, something significant is happening. Yes, it is called people are talking about it more and are more aware of it, and we have more ways to handle it now, and it is more openly talked about. That is the significant thing that is happening. The social zeitgeist is shifting. Now, I understand that literally everyone at PragerU is terrified of a social shift. It is literally the root of PragerU's brand of, of conservatism. It is terrifying to these people that things might one day change and not be the way that they remember it when they grew up. But as somebody who has played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a very long time, I can tell you that change happens and it blows dick and I want Pot of Greed back, goddammit. This is why I play Goat. Let me have Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed back and please... Links were a bad idea, okay? I'm very traumatized by link summons. In 2016, Brown University public health researcher Lisa Lippman began studying the sudden spike in trans identification of teenage girls. She concluded that peer influence and social media influence had a lot to do with this trans teen phenomenon. Yes, but not in the way you think. Social media giving you access to more people to talk to and more people who are open about being trans. Think about ContraPoints. Even, fuck, think about Blair White. Despite how monstrous of a person Blair is, there is no denying that Blair's existence in conservative spheres at least allows some people who are in conservatively oriented homes to think, hey, maybe that feeling of uncomfortableness I've been feeling all the time is dysphoria. Or, hey, maybe that feeling of goodness that I get when I cross-dress is actually gender euphoria. Those conversations happen when influencers who exist as trans openly 
regardless of political spec regardless of political affiliation are there for you to see now again this is not me advocating for blair jesus fucking christ but the fact of the matter is having avenues where people can go oh wait i might be this this is normal again we saw this with homosexuality in america more people were openly homosexual the more it got normalized that's not a bad thing it's that people either came out of the closet or realized that it was even an option for them why can't you get your dick up with your wife john and why did the milkman suddenly give you a boner after 20 years of marriage gee john i don't know what it could be Gosh, golly darn, wouldn't it be swell if we could just leave it to Beaver and not think about this? And then 40 years later, homosexuality becomes a lot more normalized, and suddenly, at age 70, John is having his first pegging session with Dave. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I use that ideally comedic demonstration to show that this is happening to people of all ages, not just children, but uniquely... When societal changes happen in the world, you would expect the children to be affected first because they are not they are the ones that do not have a predisposition against those societal changes. Think about the difference between somebody born into the Jim Crow era and somebody born directly after the Jim Crow era. The idea that black people are not second-rate citizens that is a predisposition for one of those groups, the pre-Jim Crow era group. It is not a predisposition for the post-Jim Crow era group, at least not likely. Again, I understand this is terrifying for Prager U. It means nothing, however, in the grand scheme of things. The idea that, oh, more children are doing this now. Yeah, they're going to be the early adopters. That is what happens. I expect when I'm 60 and a crotchety old man, I'm going to be making some version of this argument, and there's going to be people like me at age 30 looking at 60-year-old me calling me a fucking doofus for the exact same reasons. After all, based on parent reports, none of these girls had exhibited symptoms of gender dysphoria at the age that it typically first presents, early childhood. Likely because they were not cognizant of it at that time. However, they are more they have more ability to be cognizant of it right now. Can you imagine right now if you were a child experiencing gender dysphoria and you happened upon ContraPoints and you had no idea ContraPoints was trans and you started binging ContraPoints content and then you got to the older content and noticed that ContraPoints looked a little different. Natalie looked a little bit different than what you're used to and not in the same way that you originally thought, not in, not in just the age way. And suddenly it clicks to you, oh wait, this person is trans. You might not have had a concept of that prior to binging Natalie's content. Or an even better example would be Philosophy Tube. Let's say you're a kid binging Philosophy Tube's content right now. Now, should you? That's completely up to the parent. But you're binging that content right now, and you... Finally, in going through the backlog of content, you get to the episode where she came out as trans. When you realize that Ollie had been a character for the longest time, and that was not their name, and had not been their name for a very long time. When you get to that point in binging that content, how earth-shattering is that going to be if that is the first time you have ever experienced the term trans in any way, shape, or form? So, again, yes, social media is affecting this. Not in the way that you think and not in a caustic way. There's this other thing that PragerU is trying to hit on, the idea that social media means things change faster and therefore it's bad. YouTube, Reddit, Tumblr, TikTok, and Instagram all host popular social media influencers. Facebook does as well, but seeing as PragerU is mostly consumed by boomers and or idiots, they're not going to post the, the favorite of the boomers there. 
today's version of Hollywood stars, who insist that if you feel uncomfortable in your body, you're probably trans. Nope, that is not what they say. But then again, I don't know who they are. There could be some influencers who do. There likely are. But there are also many who don't. When you say that all of these popular influencers say this, I don't know who you're referring to or by what you mean. Now, it is likely, if you are not comfortable in your body, that you might be trans, but you also might not be trans. There could be some other factors at play. Dysmorphia is a thing as well. You might be experiencing something completely different. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not going to tell you what's probably happening. I have no idea. But to say that all these people are saying that if you're uncomfortable in your body, you're probably trans, that feels disingenuous. Because while you can grab 50, 100, 200 people who say that, you can grab just as many who don't. Many promise that if you start a course of testosterone, all of your problems will go away. No, they don't promise that. Now, there is, I will say this, there is a glorification of HRT. That is a thing that I have noticed, especially on places like TikTok, uh, where people will be like, day 183 of taking tea, and everything's good now. But again, this is like me going, everything's great as a magic player, because I have my scalding tarns. No, everything's not great. I still have to deal with Tron. I still have to deal with dumb shit decks in, in the fucking modern format. But I have my scalding tarns now, so at least that part is better. Just like you can have somebody who is taking tea, and they are better in the dysphoria sense. They are better because they're more comfortable in their body, uh, but they're still working a low-paying job that is not covering all their needs and expenses. Nobody is marketing HRT as a wonder cure for all of life's problems like Prager U does with conservatism. Also, REXD, thank you very much for redeeming your points. For an... You fucking weird person. The timing on you guys. There's every reason to believe that these girls are experiencing real psychological pain. Rates of anxiety, depression, and instances of self-harm are all at record levels for this generation. A quick fix becomes very tempting. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. Did you just think hormone therapy is a quick fix? How, how fucking stupidly wrong do you have to be? Just think, just chat. How many trans people do you know who've been on hormone therapy? How long are they on hormone therapy? How long does how long does hormone therapy last? How, how long? Just just you fire off some answers real quick. Or if you are trans in the audience, tell me how long you've been on hormone therapy. Um cuz last I checked, that's a that's a pretty a pretty long-term thing. There's nothing quick about it. There's nothing quick about HRT at all. What kind? So don't you take HRT and you take it for the rest of your life. Ding, 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 ding. Airy XD got it in one. Who the fuck thinks it's a quick fix? Prager you. Who are you selling this shit to? I understand that the ground-up crystals of Ben Shapiro's fingernails might be enticing to some people, but what the fuck is this? Video, a friend's suggestion, to get a troubled girl to buy into the fantasy that gender transition is the answer. Unfortunately for these girls who do not have typical gender dysphoria, gender transition rarely offers relief. Right, because sometimes it's dysmorphia, sometimes it's other things. You're fighting a straw man saying that everybody says that transition solves all your problems. Most people don't. And in fact, I would argue that most of the most popular people on TikTok, on YouTube, on Tumblr, who are trans, do not advocate for HRT as a fix-all to all of life's problems. Moreover, they are not medical professionals. You want to know who actually recommends HRT to you? Medical fucking professionals. But, but go ahead, Prager you. I know that you guys don't like medical professionals because they do these things called studies and facts. And it's a catastrophic mistake for psychologists, educators, and the medical establishment 
to rush these teens towards a solution that will almost certainly harm rather than heal. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you, you, do you really think we rush them? Uh, let's talk about puberty blockers for a second because that literally it's the definition of not rushing, okay? We don't rush in, in, in the vast majority, the vast majority of cases, and especially all the ones that I know of, we do not rush people through transition. It is a long and arduous process. If you are an adolescent, you get puberty blockers and years of psychological therapy to determine whether or not you are actually feeling dysphoria for a long time or if the gender that you believe you are is what you actually feel and it's not just a phase that you are going through temporarily as some kids are apt to do. You might end up going on puberty blockers. And if you go on puberty blockers, that's generally a five year long thing. You're on puberty blockers long enough to get to the ripe old age of 17 or 18 so that you can start transition then if you so choose. But you know what happens if you, take, if you stop taking the puberty blockers? The same thing that happens if you just have late stage puberty, you go through a regular ass puberty. Now, let's talk about the reverse side of this because PragerU is not going to talk about that because they have a position that they are trying to push. If you happen to know someone who is AMAB, uh, I, I will say this. My personal belief is that there are aspects of being AMAB and when you go through an AMAB puberty, so a male puberty, when you go through that, there are some aspects of that that are not easily reversible or just cannot be reversed. Things like the enlargement of your larynx uh, which changes the way you speak, it causes many people who are AMAB and transition later in life, they have to do things like vocal therapy. And vocal therapy doesn't always mean that they can perfectly replicate a feminine voice. Sometimes they can't. And this is something that uniquely affects a mad people. But you know what solves that problem? If they take puberty blockers for an amount of time, then those puberty blockers allow them to not go through that if you are transitioning into a feminine gender. That enlargement of the larynx, as well as other issues, are very detrimental. Especially if you're doing it because you, you suffer dysphoria. Your voice can be a source of dysphoria. Things like the starting of that, the starting of facial hair. Those are damaging long term if dysphoria is a factor here. And categorically, everyone that PragerU is talking about here is somebody with dysphoria because they're refusing to acknowledge trans people who do not experience dysphoria. As a result, the usage of puberty blockers is meant as a time buyer. That's what it is for. That's what it does. And it does a decently good job of that. And mind, we use puberty blockers in other cases that aren't about trans people, and they work fine in those cases too. Like if we find out that somebody has early onset breast cancer and they are AFAB, we might give them puberty blockers because it will stop the estrogen from pumping shit into their breasts, which literally feeds those cancer cells. We have other uses of these things. We have studied puberty blockers. We have a lot of data on what puberty blockers do. But PragerU isn't going to talk about that. They're going to talk about rushing to a solution, despite the fact that waiting several years to come to a decision is the very definition of not rushing things. Because here's what's not in dispute. Unnecessary medical gender transition causes irreversible damage. Uh, correct. I brought up James Money earlier, and I will bring him up again. There is an incident that James Money caused, and it is one of the most damaging things to his entire career. He castrated, uh, he, he accidentally uh, castrated uh, someone during a botched circumcision and ended up trying to fix it by, quote, transitioning them uh, and then it caused a lifetime of problems and psychological damage because they were being forced into a gender that they did not agree with nor conform to. Uh, now, I'm just going to go ahead and point out right now that that more proves my point than anything, but point is, yes, unnecessary 
transition can cause damage. Irreversible damage in some cases. This is why medical professionals are involved in every step of the process. Unnecessary surgery can cause irreversible damage, which is why medical professionals are involved in every part of the process. Unnecessary anything medical can cause irreversible damage, which is again why medical professionals are involved in every part of the of the process. Uh, he wasn't the one. He wasn't the one that botched the John money. He wasn't the one who botched the circumcision. Okay, so I've got, I have my memory on that somewhat botched there. Point is, the overall point is the same. It ends up being an argument against forced circumcision. It ends up being an argument against some other adult determining your some other adult determining your gender for you. High risk of infertility, sexual dysfunction, and the creation of a permanent medical patient. Okay, so you there's nothing wrong with being a permanent medical patient. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. If you have diabetes, you're a permanent medical patient. If you have severe trauma, you might be a permanent medical patient if you consider mental health to be medical. Um, high risk of infertility, it's not that high of a risk, but again, the actual numbers here are not being shown. So let's go ahead and see chance of infertility from HRT. Da, 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 da. Fertility preservation is best attempted before you start hormone therapy, but after you take an HRT, you will need to stop roughly three months in order to attempt fertility preservation. If pregnancy is wanted, low-dose estrogen replacement will not prevent a miracle pregnancy from happening. So I'm not seeing... Okay. There's a study with women with irregular cycles. Four of ten women ovulated before HRT. Three of the women uh, had cycles during HRT, while three of the six who did not ovulate started... Okay, so that's... I don't see super hard numbers on this. There is a risk of infertility, but I don't know if I'd consider it high. Because I'm not seeing anything in what I'm looking up real quick that shows it as nightmarishly high. I'm not seeing a full-on number. And I would like a number because Prager is not giving me a goddamn number. Sexual dysfunction. What does that mean? Sexual dysfunction can be ED, like the joke that I just made earlier about the, the, the high school jock and his performance problems. I don't know what sexual dysfunction means in the context of what Prager Hugh is trying to talk about. And the creation of a permanent medical patient, we already went over that. So let's continue. Tragically, we've made it far too easy for kids to take this path, long before they're ready psychologically or emotionally to make such a life-altering decision. Actually, if you just advocated for the utilization of puberty blockers, then that just buys the time the children need. But PragerU argues against puberty blockers in other videos as well, so literally every single aspect that allows us to make life bearable for children who find out that they are trans or children who are questioning whether or not they are trans, all the avenues that we could possibly explore to make life better for these people is cut away in PragerU's worldview, and it ends up just being them saying, suck it up and pull, your up by, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Testosterone is easily obtained by today's teens. Is it? In Oregon, a 15-year-old can walk into a gender clinic. Yes, there are now gender clinics all over the country. Y yeah, that's a good thing. Fuck off. Jesus. And walk out the same day with a prescription for testosterone without her parents' permission. Why should the parents' permission be in important here? I I'm just going to say this right now. So, 15-year-old, yes, you are still a minor, but I will say this right now. Um, remember that Prager U's original ethos in this entire video was you didn't know anybody who was trans when you were a kid. Uh, you didn't know people who identified as a different gender when you were a kid. Those same parents they are marketing those statements to are the parents who likely would have control over this particular decision 
where the child is concerned. Now, I understand that there are certain medical practices that are taken out of the parent's hands, and I know that there are certain medical practices that are taken out of the child's hands. If your parent happens to be a Jehovah's Witness and they try to argue against a blood transfusion to save their child's life, it is likely that a doctor is going to do the damn thing anyway, because honestly, if you're that type of parent, fuck you, you don't deserve to be a parent. Shut the fuck up. Go home. Take your L and do not collect your $100. CPS will see you in the morning. Fact of the matter is, there are a variety of medical situations in which the parent's consent is not required, and there are a variety of medical situations in which the child's consent is not required. So bringing this up doesn't mean anything. And it's brought up without proper context, because when you just say you can walk in and walk out with it, well, how did they get it? Did they get it because they took a survey? Did they get it because they just said, I want it? How did they procure it? By what mechanism did they procure it? Because I doubt that they just walked into the gender clinic and came out with their, their magic gender drugs. 16-year-old girls have been able to undergo double mastectomies, the removal of both breasts, without even a therapist's note. Okay. It's their breasts. They don't want them. Like, let's say, let's say that you have back pain and you're already experiencing that at 16 years old. Well, you need a therapist's note. Takes knife to them at home. Don't do that. I do not advocate for doing that. Predictably, hasty gender transition. Remember, we're talking about teenagers here. Uh, yeah, I know you're talking about teenagers because you're working under the idea that you are the enlightened adult and therefore teenagers are stupid. And I can understand that idea, but I knew several teenagers smarter than you when I was in high school. I wasn't one of them. I was a dumbass then, and I'm still a dumbass now. Is now leading to a lot of regret. New testimonials appear on YouTube almost every week from teens who acknowledge that they made a terrible mistake and warn others not to make the same one. Have you ever considered that people on the internet can lie? The testimonials are one of the absolute worst methods of determining, like, li literally anything. There's a reason why testimonials are utilized by scam websites all the time. You can use testimonials to convince anybody of literally anything. So how do you protect your daughter from being drawn into this dangerous and growing trend? First, limit their exposure to social media as much as you can. So, so I agree that limiting exposure to social media can be a good thing, but I'm just going to say this right now. Um, there's a lot of avenues where this can be used to create an environment where a child can get abused. Let's say that social media is their only escape and they don't even recognize that they're being abused because they think that what they're going through is normal, and then they happen to see things on Facebook or on Twitter that enlighten them otherwise. I don't think limiting is going to be all that necessary in many cases. I do think it's useful. Unplugging is useful personally. But, yeah, no, calling... So, the, the, I, I didn't catch that earlier, and thank you for pointing that out, Ari. So, they also, you're right, they said trend. The, 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 the trans trend. So, while the popularization of being trans might be a trend, trans people are not a trend. Just like homosexual people are not a trend. Black people were not a trend. This These are just... Facts of life. People that you have to deal with right now. And yeah, the popularization and the over-validation of people for being trans, that might be a trend by some definitions. But trans people aren't a trend. They're just people. It's like saying white people are a trend. What kind of five head take is it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what world being trans is actually like trendy in, except for like very, very small echo chambers on the internet, because they receive more hate than validation nine times out of 10 here on the internet.com. Several academic studies have already linked the alarming rates of anxiety and depression 
to young girls' punishing experience on social media. Yeah, but that is categorically separate to the, the trans argument. You, you brought up the social media thing in relation to the, to the trans argument. It has nothing to do with the anxiety and everything else that's brought up on social media. You just lumped this in so that the point sounds better. Again, I agree that there is efficacy in limiting your time on social media, but I also think that the parent coming in and trying to limit the time themselves sometimes might not be the best thing, especially for the child in cases where the parents might be abusive and social media might be the gateway to determining for the child that they are being abused. A place that often makes them feel sad, unattractive, and alone. And social media can also make you feel uh, happy, attractive, and validated, and also very much filled with several people. The ability, I'm, I'm just going to say this right now, I feel alone a lot, but the ability to just send a message to one of my friends right now, like, I could be like, hey, I wonder what Renita's doing. Boom, send a message, out. Or, hey, I wonder what Nick and Channel Pub and Wayne of the Sunset City crew are doing. I can just send it, I can send a message out instantly. It's a lot harder to feel alone in that world than the one where I just sit down and be alone. Yes, it can feel isolating being in the large smorgasbord of social media, but I think that the trade-off in many cases of being able to access people to talk to at all times, I think that's worthwhile. Second, oppose the teaching of gender ideology in your kid's school. Ah, here's the in one. California, gender identity education begins in kindergarten and proceeds through high school. Yeah, and there's literally nothing wrong with that. Your kid has to operate with a gender their entire life in some way, shape, or form, whether it's the one that they have or the one that somebody else has and they have to identify uh, their friends via a gender. So teaching kids about gender as a concept, I don't see anything wrong with that. The theme is that kids' gender identity is totally independent of their physical sex and something that only they can know. Yeah, that's, 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 so, okay, totally independent? Eh, I don't know if I would go that far. Uh, I would say that it is informed somewhat by your sex because there is a correlation, not that it's necessarily causative, uh, between your assigned gender and, and the sex you were born with, or the, the, the gender that you end up identifying with and the sex you were born with. There is generally a correlation between the two. We do happen to have more cis people than non-cis people, but this is Prager U, so I expect this is also a straw man. But the idea that gender is, by and large, socially constructed, if that's what they're trying to argue against, then no, that's basically what we've understood scientifically for, what, 50 years? When was, when was doing gender, gender by uh, Candace written? Pretty sure that was 1984. Schools can and should insist that every child be treated respectfully without yep. sowing gender confusion in an entire student population. So there's nothing confusing about you could choose your gender. That's That literally makes it less confusing. What's confusing is going, wait, am I a boy or am I a girl? I don't know. What's less confusing is, oh, well, I could just, whichever one I'm comfortable as, I could just pick it. I just, just do that. Okay. Like, one of those is infinitely easier to wrap your head around when you've thought about it for a bit than the one where you don't have any information and you have to just kind of suck it up, buttercup. Third, and most importantly, remember that a teenager is still just a teenager. You don't have to agree with every identity proclamation your daughter comes up with. Knowledge of her identity will develop over time. Yeah, which is why puberty blockers are useful, but you know. Until then, being the adult in the relationship is the most loving thing you can do. So what does being the adult in the relationship mean? Do you look at your, say, 14-year-old child who has declared to you that uh, they have not felt comfortable in their body for a year and now they think that they actually might be comfortable, more comfortable as a different gender and they are terrified of experiencing a puberty that to them is not their own? And when 
presented with that information instead of internalizing that and going, okay, then just in case that is true, we're going to put you on puberty blockers for a little bit if that is a thing that a therapist decides is adequate for the situation. Instead, do you advocate for taking the path of saying, no, I, I, you were born a woman and you are still a woman and you will be a woman for the rest of your life. Is that is that what being the adult in the room means to you? I don't I don't know. Again, this is another one of those vapid statements. What does be the adult in the room mean? Because to me, OK, cool. I'll be the adult in the room. We're going to a psychologist. We're going to a psychiatrist, rather. We're going to go see what we have to do to make your life more comfortable going forward. And if it turns out that the son that I've had for 12 or 13 years is actually a daughter, then I will live with a daughter for the rest of my life. That's what that fucking means. That's what being the adult in the room will mean to me when I approach that decision. But, you know, Prager you. You know what? Thank you for the sound advice, Prager you. I will be the adult in the room and take them to a medical professional to go make sure that they get the help that they need because that's what the adult would do. So thank you very much for that. Fox of Fate, thanks for redeeming your points for an... Da -da -da. You fucking weirdo. But I think I've blabbered on quite enough where this video is concerned. I have to throw it now back to all of you. All of you in the chat, what do you think? And also, all of you who are listening in over on YouTube, let me know in the comment section, what do you think about PragerU's video, and do you think that I gave an adequate response here? I want the conversation to continue down there. I want to know what you guys think. Remember, if even if I don't respond to all of your comments, I do generally read pretty much all of them. I, I have a very unhealthy relationship with the YouTube Studio app. Yeah, no, it's bad. Really bad. Really bad. I also realize that when I'm not looking at the screen, I maybe look like a bobblehead. Why? Anywho, with all that said, if you want to support my channel and what I do, there are multiple ways to do it in the description below. There's also a merch shop, as I pointed out earlier in the video. And as always, everyone, insert in the video tagline here.